In 2016, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, or IHRA, or IRA, uh, adopted a working definition of anti-Semitism. This, defi this working definition uh, consists of a paragraph which defines anti-Semitism and was then added to with 11 what were called illustrative examples of anti-Semitic uh, speech acts which were intended to guide the IHRA in its work. In 2018, the issue of whether the UK Labour Party, then under the leadership of the left-wing leader Jeremy Corbyn, should adopt the IRA definition of anti-Semitism, came to the fore. Um, some countries had already adopted it. The 31 countries of the IHRA had adopted it, including the UK, and some other institutions such as universities and um, local councils had also adopted the working definition. And there was enormous pressure on Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party to do the same, to adopt the working definition. Um, the BBC uh, reported that the working definition was in fact universally adopted, though this was far from the case, but it was being widely adopted and there was huge pressure on Jeremy Corbyn to adopt the working definition. The issue at stake is that the IHRA's working definition and its 11 illustrative examples uh, were what were seen in some quarters anyway as being an attempt to restrict free speech about the actions of the Israeli government. Um, they were drafted in such a way that they rely rather heavily on interpretation and were thus rather difficult to import into legally binding, a legally binding framework. And in fact, they themselves say it is a non-legally binding definition. It is not intended to be legally binding at all. It is, attempt, it is intended merely to assist the IHRA and other bodies who wish to investigate anti-Semitism to do so. It was never intended to be legally binding. The author of the report himself, Kenneth, Kenneth Stern, had issued a, a warning about the use of the working definition for these reasons. He said this, The definition has been weaponized to silence criticism of the government of Israel and its actions. Mr. Stern also was critical of, Pre of then President Trump's um, executive order that US academic institutions should adopt the IRA's working definition, which he said was an attack on academic freedom and free speech. Baroness Faulkner, the newly appointed head of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, who would go on to mount uh, a controversial investigation into allegations of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, described the working, de the working definition as extremely poorly worded, probably unactionable in law, and in direct conflict with the obligation to protect free speech. Right-wing elements inside the Labour Party, though, who are opposed to the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn, were insistent that the Labour Party must adopt the working definition and all 11 of its illustrative examples, including the seven that direct, relate directly to Israel, and were furious with Jeremy Corbyn that this did not happen immediately, that there was any debate about it whatsoever. A prominent right-wing um, Labour MP, Margaret Hodge, became so furious about this that she screamed at Jeremy Corbyn in the parliamentary precincts within the hearing of others that he was an effing racist and anti-Semite. Um, she was in, um, investigated for these comments and described her feelings about being investigated for screaming abuse at the leader of the Labour Party in public. Um, described it as being similar to the feelings that Jews had in the 1930s in Germany. On the day that I heard that they were going to discipline me and possibly suspend me, it felt almost like I kept thinking, what did it feel like to be a Jew in Germany in the 30s? Because it felt almost as if they were coming for me. And it's rather difficult to define, but there's that fear 
and it reminded me of what my dad used to say. He always said to me as a child, you've got to keep a packed suitcase at the door, Margaret, in case you ever have to leave in a hurry. And when I heard about the disciplinary, my emotional response resonated with that feeling of fear that clearly was at the heart of what my father felt uh, when he came to Britain. How would you... After a considerable amount of angst, the Labour Party did finally adopt the working definition and all 11 of its illustrative examples in September 2018, although it later emerged that there had had to be added to it a code to translate it into legally binding language because it was not legally binding. It was never intended to be. Probably unactionable in law, said the head, the chair of the uh, EHRC. Um, when this code became made, was made known, there was another outburst of rage and anger about it. Although much later in a, in a court filing, it was exposed that um, Keir Starmer, who took over from Jeremy Corbyn and was a far more centrist leader, had been using exactly the same code because the, the, the code, the, the definition as it stood was simply not actionable in law. It was not, it was not legally binding and was never intended to be legally binding. So, was Jeremy Corbyn, as Margaret Hodge said, a effing racist and anti-Semite for not immediately adopting a working definition which was extremely poorly worded, probably unactionable in law, and in direct conflict with the obligation to protect free speech? I think it's fairly obvious that he was not. The claim is false.